All right, so welcome everybody. This is our teaching and learning and UX call for uh, February 15th. Um, and uh, today we have um, just a few um, things on the agenda. So we're going to talk a little bit about Sakai Camp, which was um, on uh, February 6th and 7th uh, for those who attended. And uh, for those who didn't, we can give you kind, kind of a little bit of a recap. Um, and then we have um, Miguel here, who's going to show us um, a, a quick demo of some of the um, work that they're doing for the S2U, that's the Spanish Universities um, project that um, they have, have a whole slew of enhancements for Sakai um, that they're going to be adding over the year. So, um, so that's really exciting work. And we're going to um, actually have a standing item for that on the teaching and learning call um, each meeting. So um, Miguel's going to show us what they're up to um, so far, and then we'll get some sort of periodic updates at, at each call. Um, and then we'll take a few minutes toward the, the latter half of the call to take a look at Trinity. That, that's the new UI for uh, Sakai 23, just to see if folks have any additional feedback. I know we had done a, a focus group um, back in, I want to say like October or November, um, to look at Trinity. But there have been a lot of little changes and tweaks and things fixed since then. So um, it might be useful for us as a group to just kind of um, take a look at the interface and see um, if there's additional feedback that you want to um, let people know or any bugs that we need to document, um, things like that. So um, that'll be at the end of the call. And then if we have any time left, we might uh, try to get to a few JIRAs that we have in the parking lot there for JIRAs. So um, first off, welcome. Um, I don't have any announcements. Uh, per se, because uh, the Kai Camp was last week. So uh, does anybody else have any announcements there right now? Nope. OK, so we'll move right into our Sakai Camp highlights. So um, Sakai Camp was in Orlando, Florida, on um, February 6th and 7th. So that's our annual um, sort of uh, strategic planning and, um, you know, uh, team building activity that we do. Um, we haven't done it in person since COVID. So this was our first post COVID um, Sakai camp. So that was, it was kind of a, a reunion of sorts to see folks that um, maybe we hadn't seen in a very long time and to have a bit longer discussions over, you know, some topics that we've um, maybe touched on in some of the other meetings, some of the other working groups, but could discuss at more length. Um, over the two days of, of meetings here in Orlando. So let me, um, you have the the link, but I'll just, I'll copy it and paste it into the chat there. That is the, um, the meeting notes uh, from Sakai Camp. So um, we didn't record the sessions because they were long and we wanted people to feel open to, you know, talk about whatever without being recorded. But we did um, keep some notes. So, uh, you know, some of the high points are documented there. Certainly not everything, but um, might serve as a way to kind of jog your memory if you're there. Um, things that, uh, that particularly stood out for you. So I'm just going to kind of open up the floor. I know I see a couple three people maybe that were three or four people that were at Sakai camp just to see if you guys had any highlights or takeaways from the event. Um, feel free to, to chime in. I thought it was a great event. Um, we did wonderful amounts of work on day one and half a day two. Then it got into technical things that I didn't quite understand, but I really felt that we had covered a lot of ground. Um, I hope others did too. And I know we had a little bit of technical issue with people hearing us, but we did uh, get a lot done looking at um, items and uh, seeing S2U, finding about Sky Plus, what the plans are, what people hope to do over the next year. Um, it was really very good. Thanks, Didi. Anybody else? I'll just say that it was pretty special to 
to see people in person again. A few folks I had seen in recent months, but uh, there were several people that I hadn't seen in quite a long time, and that was that was really nice. Thanks, Josh. Adrian, any takeaways or Miguel? Well, I'm with Josh. It was good to meet you in person finally, and we discussed many important topics. Definitely worth to to go from Spain. Yeah, same. Yeah, it, it, really, yeah, it was really good. I mean, it's good. It's good seeing people. You know, having a few beers, and you know, and the meetings were productive. You know, two long, two pretty long days, but we covered a lot, a lot of stuff. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I mean, Thank relevant for, for this group, uh, we adopted a roadmap, so that, that's a good thing. Um, we had a fairly extended conversation about next steps for lessons, which is a, a you know, which is central to Sakai and a differentiator and a, and a big deal from a teaching and learning perspective and a UX perspective. And the, on the, on the second day when I wasn't there, there was a whole lot of discussion about uh, bulk actions which probably bears more thinking about from a UX perspective. Yeah, yeah, we should probably put that on the agenda for a later um, teaching learning UX call uh, to talk a little more about some of um, Christina's ideas that she had proposed about um, separating the import piece from the publishing piece. And, um, and we kind of sort of spun that off into uh, talking about having sort of bulk operations in various tools, um, not just like assignments or tests and quizzes, but also maybe the date manager where you could update published dates uh, for lots of things. Um, so, so yeah, that would be a good topic for a future call. Another thing that we talked about a little bit um, on day one was specifications grading. So I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with that type of grading, but it's a, a, a a form of grading that's gaining popularity. Um, it's a little less traditional than like your standard, you know, numbered grades. So it's uh, where you define specifications for a letter grade and um, everything is graded kind of on a pass fail basis. So you complete the set of specs for a particular grade that you want to earn and um, and that's how you earn the grade. So it, it's a little bit different. That's a super fast uh, explanation and probably not the most in-depth one, but maybe we could do a, a session at a later date about specs grading um, because Pepperdine in particular was interested in looking at, at ways to enable that um, easier in the in the grade book and um, and other types of non-numeric scoring that might be um, of use to folks. Like there's uh, another type of grading, which is called ungrading, where you actually don't grade. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to assess people, basically. So we want to make it possible to do that. And so that's, I think, another topic that would make for a good um, teaching and learning call. So, um, yeah, we, we covered a lot of ground. Um, it was a pretty full couple days, but um, we we actually stayed on schedule pretty well according to um, what was in the agenda. So if you guys see anything on the agenda that you would like to suggest as a future topic for one of our calls, um, please do. And um, I'd be happy to, to slot it into one of our agendas for an upcoming meeting. All right, any other thoughts on Sakai Camp before we switch gears? We should probably also say a quick uh, thank you to Chuck and Learning Experiences for their, their support of Sakai, Sakai Camp. There was a whole lot of sponsorship that went on um, that learning, learning Experiences took care of a bunch of expenses that really made Sakai Camp possible. And so definitely worth calling that out. Yes, yes. Very good point, Josh. Um, and uh, and dinner at Tutu Tango was also sponsored <laughs> by Learning Experiences. So that's sort of a Sakai Camp tradition at this point. Um, so yeah, big thanks to Dr. Chuck for um, footing the bill for all of that. All right. So one of the things that we decided at Sakai Camp was that we needed a standing 
um, item on the teaching and learning agenda to get um, kind of an update from the Spanish folks. So we have Miguel here today and he's going to um, talk to us a little bit about the S2U project and um, some of the latest uh, features that they're working on. So I'm going to give you uh, presenter rights, Miguel, if you would like to share anything on your screen, uh, feel free. Okay, thanks, Wilma. Let me see if I can share my, my screen. Do you guys see, see my screen? Yes. Oh, perfect. We see you. Perfect. So let me start. I mean, I'm going to go fast because I only have 15 minutes and I want to make a demo. of. All yeah, the... you, can, you can run a little long if you need to. That's fine. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> we no can problem. be flexible. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to show some of the items that have been already developed and have been tested by by the the universities. So I want to say again, thanks to the main universities that made this project possible because they they are funding this project with the with the European funds and they worked really hard on on documenting the intentions of the project so they got finally an approval from the European Union they got the funds in order to improve Sakai so that's going to to provide more than 50 interesting features for 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 Sakai so um we mentioned this many many times in, during the meetings we have um dedicated QA site where everybody can test the the features the study features the ones that are already completed and this is the URL um, the credentials are refreshed every week and they are similar to the nightly server credentials, just admin admin or instructor Sakai or the same collection of users also work. Um, this We're going to demo nine features today. Uh, and I'm going to start by the first one. So the first one is in announcements, the ability to highlight announcements. So I don't know if this, you still see my screen, right? Yes, we're seeing so, the Sakai window yeah. now. Perfect. So for from the student perspective, so if I access as a student, then I see um, in my in my in my workspace, two announcements, one which is important and another one which is not important. So the second one has been highlighted by the instructor, so it's highlighted in the view. So that's the reason why it appears with a star. This announcement has been highlighted and it has a different, a different size, so it's more relevant. So this, the student can see that it's more important than this one. If we go to the, to the demo, then we also see in the same widget the important highlighted announcements. And also in the lessons widget, it, the announcement is highlighted. So this is an example as a student and as an instructor. You see the same information. And in the case of the announcements, we have a new checkbox, which is highlight the announcement. So highlight this announcement, so it will be more prominent in the announcement list. So if we unclick the option to highlight the assignment, the announcement, sorry, it's just a standard one. Same in the in the widget, same in the in the lessons widget. So it's just a standard, but we always have the option to highlight it. And it's more relevant when a student or instructor checked check the list of, of announcements. So it's pretty useful to to highlight important announcements. Um, any other question about this? Oh, I think it looks great. 
Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank What's you. next? <laughs> yeah. The, the next one is going to be the, in assignments, display the grades in the main view. So if I access a student to a course, right now in Sakai, the student needs to click in every assignment to see the grade, but not anymore. Right now there's a new column, which is the grades, which is displayed here, and it displays the grades of the student. But right now this is not possible in Sakai. In Sakai you see everything like this, but you don't see the grades column. So the grades column reflect the grades. So in this case, this is a, a check assignment, which is unchecked. This is a check assignment, which is checked. This is a pass fail assignment, and this, the student got a fail, and here the student got a pass. This is a letter grade assignment. He got a cut plus, A plus. So for a group, it got these points. In the case of, of the group, but it's individual score is this grade, and an individual assignment is this grade. So if you access the assignment, the submission, uh, excuse me, you will see the same the same information. Okay. I I graded as a student, as a, as an instructor, all the all the assignments. So that's the reason why the submission doesn't exist. But um, in the case of the submissions, it's going to display the grade here. So students can take a fast look about the grades of the assignments in sites. Okay, any other question about this? No. So next one. In the case of also in the case of assignments, when an assignment is created, it's assigned by default to the groups where the student where the user is an instructor. So what's going on here? In the case of the Spanish universities, they have big sites with a big number of groups and a big number of set of sections. So sometimes the instructors complain a lot that the assignment is assigned to the entire site by default. So in this case, for example, I think we have three groups, one group where the instructor is a member, a second group where the instructor is a member, and a third group where the instructor is not a member. So imagine that I'm in 10, 12 groups. Uh, also in Spain, uh, multiple instructors um, participate in a, in a site. So maybe it has 10 or 12 groups and they, they are like three or four instructors for the same site. Sometimes it's tricky when they Can create you... assignments because it's assigned to the full site. So in this it's case, is the full site or the sections? I'm sorry, I was a little confused by that. It's assigned by default to the full site. Mm -hmm. So in this case, when I try to create an, an assignment as instructor, it's assigned by default to the groups and it's assigned to the groups I belong. Right now, in 22, the default option is this one. So by default, you need to go to your groups and select the groups you belong. So this is more automatic just because it's assigned to the groups you are instructor. So in this case, it's assigned to the first group because you are a member, to the second group because you are a member, <sighs> but not to the third group because you are not a member. Got it. So imagine that, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, there are sections. a lot of groups. That's painful. Yeah, 20 <laughs> sections. You, you only belong to two sections by default. The assignment is, is created for the full site, but that's incorrect because as instructor, you only want to create an assignment for your groups as instructor. Right. And Christina has a question in the chat. Yeah. What is the question? Um, but there can't, but that can still be edited if the instructor wants to include, a, be included in group three. Okay. Exactly. This is just the default configuration to make the creation of the assignment faster and, and, and adapted to the group. But of course you can assign to the group where you not belong or you can assign to the full site. You can choose individual um, submission or group submission. Okay, so it's, it's just the defaults to make the instructor life easier. Okay. So if the instructor is not in a group, 
what does does it default to the site yeah like now okay correct and i think i think this is controlled by a property so the feature can't be disabled but more information in the jira any question about this okay Another one is in the portal here, you are a maintain. So I'm an instructor, but if I go to this site, then I'm an instructor role. But if I, if I click in this site, I'm an student. Well, in this case, it's a project site, so you're an access, but it's gonna be, you're a student. Okay, in this case, you are maintain. So what happens? Some, most regular users can be instructors, but they can also be, teaching assistants or they can also be students in other courses and Absolutely. that's the magic of Sakai so you have a, an account you can be a student or an instructor in different sites so basically this reflects the role in this case you are a maintain in this case you are an access in this case you are a maintain and in this case you're an instructor so it's the role where you participate in the site so if I go to manage participants, then the instructor is an instructor. So this is the role. So it's displayed in the in the portal. Okay. So it's important for them because many roles can participate. Many 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 users can participate with a different role in the university. Any question about this? Okay. Oh, that's cool. So if you're curious about getting information about the ticket or, I don't know, testing or provide comments or, or just take the feature for your instances, you can just go to the project and use this code. Okay. Because it's, it's in the, it's everything in Jira. Okay. Uh, more things. Yeah, this one. Resources add download zip events when downloading zip from multiple resources. So this is a curious case because right now in resources, imagine we have multiple files. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Multiple files. So right now in Sakai, if as a student or instructor I click on this file, it generates a content read event inside the stats. So it reflects that the user has read the content, which is good because we can know what files have been read by the specific user. But right now in 22, if I click download zip, I can download all the files like this and I can open them in my, in my computer. So it doesn't report an event. So a user can go to a site, download all the content as a zip file and there's no reference inside the stats so it's like the user never read the content but the user had access to the content so basically they reported this case and we included a new event so now that event is reflected here inside the stats so we have the content read but we also have the download zip event so all of these files have been downloaded by zip and are, are reflected inside the stats so it's just adding support for this event and report when a user downloads the files using the zip so it generates this this event make sense Have I explained myself clear about this? <laughs> yeah. Does it show which user? I know that summary report doesn't show you yes. the, the user that downloaded it, but. Yeah. So it's different event from read, the content read. So basically okay. someone reads the content through downloading the zip file. It's going to report it to the Sakai instance. So okay. it's, pretty, it's a pretty legit feature. Okay. Another one, ability to preview calculated questions in question pools. So in question pools,
we have we can have calculated questions and we have the option to check a solution so if we click for solution then it's going to provide a solution for the calculated question and i can also click another solution and it's going to provide a different one and i can click a different solution and it, it's going to provide a different one and i click another solution and it's going to provide a different one so it's a way to show the solution using the formula of the calculated question. And another and the well, that's other, the, really cool. Yeah, the other one is this one, improve internationalization in in the feedback and the calculated questions in both. So basically um we can use as you can see we can use accents and we can use Spanish characters like Dene tilde. So it's not about only X or Y or Z. You can also put accents in the in the formulas. And it works in the same way. So in this case, we can check for a solution. Five. And it's gonna sum the values. So if we click the in solution it provides the values it provides the response and it also provides the feedback and it's auto generated so it's a com i mean you can you can use the first feature with the second one it's a combination of features and the third one which is close to be completed is the global variables and it's going to also provide more more good stuff to to all of this so it's going to be a combination of three good features for calculated questions these features are depending between them. I mean, if someone is interested in this, first should, in, should install this feature, then this feature, and then the new one, which is the global variables. So it is, this is also complete and ready to test. Any question about this? No, I have no so, questions. That was really, this is fun. <laughs> you guys are doing a lot. This is just fun. Yes, it is. <laughs> and this hey, is the last one. Making some great progress. It's exciting to see. <laughs> Christine is making a wish list. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Uh, she's making a wish list. Okay. So let's talk about the last one, which is the biggest uh, feature contributed until now. And it's the Safe Exam Browser integration. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but Safe Exam Browser is an open source browser. States compatibility with some LMSs in the market. So people can download this Safe Exam Browser. And the intention is for it's conduct safe exams without, I mean, preventing cheating. So Safe Exam Browser can be downloaded, can be installed in Windows and MacOS. And um, we added support for, for Sakai to conduct Safe Exams. So in, in the case of the exams, you can create a new exam, so 10 points like the usual, and uh, you click on settings, security and proctoring, you will find require lockdown browser, locked browser. You can choose safe exam browser. So if you choose safe exam browser, you have the ability to configure manually using Sakai. You can upload your own configuration using a file. If you have a, a configuration file that can be exported from the safe exam browser or just use the client configuration, okay? So I'm going to take configure manually. I'm going to configure some of the properties. You can enable the reload. You can show the safe exam browser task bar, bar or you can hide it. You can show a reload button. You can show the time or not. You can show the keyboard layout or not, the Wi-Fi. You can also enable the audio or, or disable it. And you can also enable or disable the spell checking. 
those are features available in the browser and you have the option to, to show the features or not. I'm going to show you, for example. I'm, I'm going to show them, for example. So after this, after, after configuring the same exam browser, you just need to, to publish the exam. So when I access a student, So this exam cannot be done using begin because I'm in Chrome. So if I click begin, it doesn't work. So gives you instructions like this assessment requires the use of Safe Exam Browser. Please make sure you have Safe Exam Browser installed in your computer and click launch button. So you, if you click download, it gives you the link to Windows or Mac. Okay. And you can download the configuration provided by the instructor. This is the configuration, or you can also cancel, okay? But if you have the Safe Exam Browser, then it opens the Safe Exam Browser. And now it blocks, I mean, it detects a Slack, for example, I have a Slack open, so I need to close Slack and then it blocked my computer. So right now I don't have access to anything else. I just have access to the exam browser. So do you still see my screen? Yes, yes. Do you see I the actually, safe exam browser? Uh, well, it's, it's showing a login required, so it's probably- Yeah, blocked. okay, yeah, because I'm in the safe exam browser. But I'm, I mean, it took control over my desktop. Mm -hmm. And I have these controls. I have the Wi-Fi controls, and the and the keyboard and the time because I choose that in Sakai. Okay. So if I click on, I introduce my credentials again, then I'm able to to make the exam. Now using this browser, I see the option to begin the assessment. So this browser doesn't allow me to access my, my browser, notepad, WhatsApp information, Slack, and other sources of information. So it started as a kiosk, kiosk mode. So it blocks all my controls and I can only begin. Now the exam is performed. I see the table of contents. I can complete my Mission. This prevents me from cheating. I can submit for grading. That's it. So I made the exam using Safe Exam Browser. And now I can quit the Safe Exam Browser. So this is how it works. So again. Nope. So Miguel, for, for the folks that might not be familiar with Safe Exam Browser, is it's an open source um, browser, uh, you know, Safe Exam Browser that doesn't require a subscription like Respondus or anything like that. I don't think so. I think, no, I think um, it's an open source browser mm -hmm. and you can just use it. I mean, users are able to download it without any license. Looks like it's supported. They are providing uh, support for this. There's recent version released this year. And it's basically an open source software that um, helps with the cheating. Yeah, it's similar to Respondus Lockdown Browser, but it doesn't yep. require a subscription. So yep. that's, yeah, in this case, yeah, we, we, we yeah. didn't install, we didn't install here any, any license or any anything. It's just we included support in Sakai, in the Sakai markup and uh, for that. And now Sakai communicates with Safe Exam Browser with the right headers and the right configuration in order to conduct a, a secure exam. So you are not allowed to run this exam using uh, Chrome or Firefox or Edge. It's just you want to conduct the exam, you have to launch the Safe Exam Browser. So basically, 
it opens the SafeX browser again. Now, these are all the controls. It co it blocked my desktop, and I can only I can only work on this window. So I'm gonna insert my credentials. And I can start this this exam. I submit it and I quit the safe exam browser. So it's just for the for the delivery. So as instructor, it doesn't change because you have the options to configure several options. But as a student, these two exams can only be done using the safe exam browser. Maybe there are other. This is also in a safe exam browser. Okay. But as a regular user. If you don't 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 set it in the settings, it just runs as 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 now. And and now you have the submission here. And you can, as an instructor, you can trust that this response has been provided in a sec in a more secure environment. So the user had most of the controls blocked. That's really so, cool. So I feel that yeah, if you very, very if you cool. establish the right uh, exam du duration, exam difficulty, and you configure a good exam from the from the teaching learning perspective, this also helps with cheating. And uh, I mean, there's a big. There's a big um, set of configurations you could set here, but it's up to the instructor. I don't know why it's in Spanish. This is a bug. But yeah, it's basically, these are the controls in the browser. So when you open the browser, there are some controls here, and you as instructor can disable them. This one, this one, you can hide this. We can test. We can test. Let me see why it's. Instructor. I. options okay so the settings use it exiting from SEP no reload no the taskbar, no, no reload. Don't show time, don't show the keyboard, Wi-Fi controls, audio controls, and no speed checking. Don't publish. Yeah, it's published. Student. Okay, so I can only run and use it. Yeah, so now, now it's even more restricted. It doesn't have any control. So I can just focus on this. I can control Wi-Fi, I can control anything. So just focus on this. So you can, you can, I mean, I can even I can even close it. The close button is 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 disabled, <laughs> so I just need to grade and ah, it works. 
OK. So to make this demo, I needed, we needed to override a configuration that allows a screen share, a sharing. But after this demo, that's going to be disappear. So that's the bad thing about this. It's hard to demo. It's hard to demo because the, the screen sharing is always restricted. Well, that makes so, sense. Yeah. So we enable. We yeah, enable. That's kind of what it's supposed yeah. to do. So. It's, the, it's the effect. So we enable the screen sharing, and we're gonna we're gonna disable the screen sharing. Uh, today I'm going to do it, to do it. So the final configuration is not going to allow screen sharing. So people are not able to stream the, the exam or make a demo of this. But it's exactly what we want. I mean, from the QA perspective, we want um, the people to, to, to have the yeah. controls limited while he's doing the exam. Any question? about all of these features. Oh, nice list. Thank you so much. Yeah, so these are all built on a branch of 22, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so these are not going to be in 23 because it's the, the evolution of it is sort of in parallel to the, the 23 um, production, but they will be hopefully contributed back for 24 or potentially, um, if you wanted them in 22, there might be a way to, to get those um, kind of ported into your branch. Um, so that's that's a possibility for 22, but not for 23. Being yeah. more work involved. Yeah. yeah, correct, correct. Correct, for now, their plans are adopting 22. And we're building this in the top of 22. We keep the branch maintained. I mean, community is doing a great job maintaining the branch, providing fixes for, for the branch. And I keep all the features in the top of those features and those fixes. So it's constantly updated every week. Uh, but the contribution to master is going to happen at the end of the year because one thing is the institutions want to use 22. And the second thing is the, st the status of master right now is in development. So we didn't want to build all of this in, in, a, in a development version. We wanted in, in a stable version because at the end we have objectives and we have to make demonstrations of the features. And they, I mean, we get paid when they, when, once they verify the features. So we also want to get paid, you know? <laughs> Applause, 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 applause. Yeah, applause. definitely. It's, it's super exciting. And we'll have lots more demos similar to this um, coming up. So um, anytime they've got something new to show us, um, you can tune into a, a teaching and learning call to see the latest. So thank you, Miguel, so much for demoing me, these, especially the safe exam, which is hard to demo. <laughs> so I appreciate you. the extra effort there. Um, and this was recorded. So if you have colleagues that would be interested in seeing these, um, the, the recording will be available um, off of the Aperio YouTube channel, the teaching and learning um, playlist. And I also put those uh, archives with um, the recordings and links to the agendas and things on the teaching and learning area in Confluence. So if you wanted to find any of those uh, prior recordings, you can find them there. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, hopefully we'll have more cool stuff to look at next yep. time. Um, so we have a standing slot for you um, on our calls, which are twice monthly. So all right, um, let's see. The next item on our agenda is, let me see here. Oh, uh, the Trinity UI feedback. So we've only got about 15, well, actually slightly less than 15 minutes left, but I suppose we could take a quick look at Trinity and just kind of see um, if folks have any, you know, initial reactions or anything that they would like to, um, to note, let me just go ahead and well, you can you can demo it on nightly. 
the link is there in the etherpad. I'm also going to try to share my screen. I have to take the presenter back. Hang on. All right, let's see what I can do this time. It was confusing last time, but I had more windows open at that point. So, um, all right, so I should be sharing my screen. Yes, you guys are seeing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and log yes, in. Yes, we are seeing you, thank you. Okay, log in as admin, if it'll let me. Here we go. Okay, so this is um, 23. So if you've not seen it already, um, this is kind of what it looks like. It's uh, the navigation has changed a little bit. So your sites are over here on the side. Um, and you can jump into a particular tool that way if you would like to. Um, the current site is open up here at the top. And then um, this can be sort of expanded and collapsed. And there's also over here under the user account, you've got um, your tasks and your calendar and your grades. Um, so that shows up over there for users. You've also got your light and dark mode controls. Um, let's go into a site. Let me go into not, not the admin workspace, but go into um, here, I guess. Hmm, nothing on overview. I don't know if it's just my computer that's slow or if there's an issue with that tool. Oh, okay, somebody changed the layout, so it's kind of odd looking. I'll go into a different tool. All right, so does anybody have any comments? Let's see, I see from Alan, with the new left nav, not a fan that you can't select the site name to go to the first tool. Is that, yeah, I, I tried that too. I clicked here and then I, I clicked again thinking something must be wrong that I'm not going into the site. So yeah, that's a little annoying. Um, any other yeah, kind of weird. reactions? I think that's also because we are as a community, you know, usually you click on the name of something and it brings you into it, not like a search and then go into a tool. Right. Yeah. Right. Will that is, hmm. I mean, there's still plenty of time for JIRAs, so this would be a JIRA so if need, it's not already existing. Yeah, I'd have to look. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, although you've been on triage, DD, you might know. You or Christina. No, I, um, might, I missed it because, you know, Christina yeah. and I only did the one at camp. So we were, I yeah. wasn't. Okay. Well, Christina's regularly there. She might know if there's an existing one. But if there's not, um, I can look after the call. Um, we should put one in because I agree. That's kind of a usability thing that's a little odd. Um, yeah, Adrian says it's not clickable. So any other thoughts, reactions? We've got breadcrumbs across the top that we're kind of used to, although this brings you back to the homepage. Adrian, do you know if that's just, is that what overview looks like now? Or is that just, was it modified for that particular site? Um, I've got no idea. Yeah, I mean, it just looked kind of kind of bleak. But yeah, it really looks know. like it's one column instead of you know. It, but if there's nothing at the top, it just sort of looks blank, you know. So I don't know yeah. what's going on there. Yeah. That might I, need really a I, I always kind of click off it straight away anyway. So yeah, I've not, not, yeah. not really thought about it too much. <laughs> but again, you just get the jeers in, you know. It's like you know we're, we're working on this stuff pretty fast, you know. Uh, Right. Some, other, some other people as well are working on this stuff as well now so yeah so if you see something weird like this <laughs> if there's not a jar already um go ahead and put one in and um and hopefully we can get all these little things um kind of looked at before it goes uh, Dave out. asked a good question like what it looks like on mobile i don't know we can resize the window and see get an approximation all right, so there's, um, looks like you got to kind of navigate here and then maybe, yeah. 
Okay, that makes kind of sense. So it's similar, but it sort of goes away when it's not being accessed. Although I don't know about the icon here. Yeah, I was just having that, the same thought. Shouldn't that be a hamburger? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> the waffle makes no sense there to me. It should be a hamburger like up here. Because when, when you're up here, you kind of collapse it and it's a hamburger. It seems like it should be that in mobile that's too. It. Yeah. How about a uh, a waffle burger? Waffle burger. <laughs> I mean, that tastes good, but yeah. Oh, and this one too. I don't like this waffle. This waffle looks like a rubric. Where I like the you? other waffle, the one we have now. Um, that's the in the not outlined, but the little blocks are colored. Is what we have now. Uh huh. And this yeah, one has the outline, and it looks like a rubric icon to me. Yeah, yeah what you mean? that's bootstraps. That's bootstraps icon, right? So um, we can still use the font or some icons. We're not we're not removing them or anything. But yeah, that's probably the bootstrap version of it. Is there a, like a inverse version of it in bootstrap? Uh, probably is. Yes, there probably is. All right. So we should probably see if we can get a Jira on that if there's not one. That's another, that's another Jira. Yep. <laughs> <Four already. laughs> yep. I got my, my list of things to do this afternoon. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, anything else that people have questions about? Anything you want me to click on and see how it works? Um, yeah, sort of search. randomly. Click, click on click search. On search. Yeah. Okay. Is search on? Is it? I don't know, but just just to show just just the difference, right? So, in where it's um, yeah. So we're using sidebars. I mean, search might not be on, right? So you might not get any mileage yeah. out of putting something in there, right? But but these these sidebars, which are a thing in um, in Bootstrap, right? We're using these heavily. Mm -hmm. and I think yeah. they're really nice. Now, the notifications is the same. That's the sidebar that comes out, you know, and the. Uh, it's a lot cleaner just putting things into that you know and, and, and they work great on mobile as well those sidebars were great oh good so is this uh where we were talking we were talking about search quite a bit at um at sakai camp and also on the core call um, a little bit and uh search was a topic because um to a lot of people have it turned off right now um and because search is changing it would be maybe helpful to like in this screen maybe have you know search only in assignments search only in you know have some options there is that where you were thinking of putting them like some sort of menu or um can, filter? Well, i don't know yeah yeah i'm not i'm not sure yeah because at the moment what i've done with conversations right is when you so we've got a spyglass icon in conversations and when you click that spyglass mm -hmm in the conversations tool, it opens that sidebar, but just configures search automatically, the current tool and the common, uh, the current site and the conversation. Oh, tool. okay. I see it. Yeah. yeah it's cunning. I like that. Side, so. I like that, but I think I would also like to see it. And like, if, if I wasn't as forward thinking to go to the tool that I wanted to search, it would be nice to have an option to limit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could have, we could have that. I mean, that's the good thing about this sidebar, right? It, the UI. Mm. Is a lot probably less jittery, right, than the current uh, search drop down. So yeah, it's well, it's not going to clutter the main screen so much because it pops yeah. out and then it goes yeah. away. And it scrolls as well. It, it scrolls. Yeah. It just it just infinitely scrolls down, right? Which is great. You know, it's like it's not constrained by the height of the actual kind of portal. If you know, if you know what I mean. Right. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, I see a couple of questions from Dave in the chat. He's wondering what the logic is for surfacing recent sites. So let me scroll down below the pinned sites. It's showing recent sites. Um, is it just the last 24 hours, the last week? Uh, no, no, it's the last three. No, it's configurable in a Sakai property, right? but at the moment it defaults to the last three. So if you don't pin anything, right, you just use the, um, you know, the more sites drop down. Um, mm -hmm. The, you know, the last three sites that you visited will appear on the most recent sites. If you pin them, they're not duplicated. They're just in pin sites. So, you know, they won't clutter up most recent sites, right? They'll just stay in your pinned. So we, we try and do a few things like that where we're not duplicating, you know, the, the kind of site listings on the left. Okay. 
I guess that makes sense. But yeah, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no more, no more smart logic to it. Then it's just the last, it's it's the last three. So we can, we can update that. We can we could change that. But um, there's a date. There's a date on the recent site uh, in the in the database, right? I, I have a I have like a um, like a timestamp in there, right? So we could do things like that. We could say you know drop them off if it's more than forty eight hours ago or whatever. Yeah. Hmm. We can adapt that as we go. Though I think I think yeah. that's the. We can kind of fine tune that and see how people use it and then maybe decide. Okay, well, yeah. we're out of time. So thank you guys for taking a quick look at Trinity and we'll get some Jira's created. Um, if you have other thoughts, feel free to go into Jira and make your own. Um, so, you know, if you have a few minutes here or there, it's really helpful to get other eyes looking at it and uh, documenting anything that seems unintuitive so that we can kind of take a closer look. So, um, so please feel free to open Jira's on your own um, when things occur to you. So thank you guys again for um, attending today and I will see you. Um, our next meeting is I believe in March. Let me look at the date here. Our next meeting is March 1st. So, um, so I'll see you guys then. Have a great week.